Welcome, in front of me is a OnePlus 10 Pro and today I will show you a couple tweaks and the tricks that I can do on this phone. Now those won't be anything like super crazy so bear with me. Anyway, let's get started by going into the settings and actually I'm gonna start off by actually turning this trash off. So, there we go. And there we go. I would actually consider this to be the first uh, uh, improvement that you can make to the, the phone just because this thing is so annoying and I honestly personally had no use for it. Every time I try to pull down my notifications I would just pull that down. No bueno. Anyway, so let's open up our settings and from here we can navigate to personalization. Now this is uh, something that I actually like on OnePlus just because they give you this uh, like a list of uh, any kind of thing that you can personalize in a single location and that is in my opinion really nice so uh we have things like wallpaper and let's be honest no one cares about that one always on display you can customize that if you use this uh, i don't like to use it just because it consumes more battery and i would rather have more battery than screen that tells me the time and then we have icon packs so here we can change uh, to a different icon packs you can also edit the ones that you have right now uh, so we can change the icon size uh, arts uh, show up names and so on and if we go back we have some canvas which I actually have no idea what that is so uh, anyway let's move over to the next things which is uh, quick settings so here we can change how these icons so these ones look like and we have a couple options to choose from circle square 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 more rounder square and mixture of square and circle um, uh, this is creativity at its finest here, I guess. Anyway, below that we have colors, which actually might be more uh, more useful to some people as a customization option, so you can change it to something else. You also, luckily, have this option right here where you can change it yourself, actually choose a specific color, which I actually do really like. Some, uh, some phones include this kind of uh, customization, but they just give you like a preset of couple colors that you can choose from. So you will never find a color that you actually really want. Here, here we go, here is a wheel. You can go crazy with it, really nice. And below that we have also font and display size. Uh, so you can change the font, uh, text the size and so on. If you want to utilize that, go right ahead. And last thing, uh, we have thing, or not last thing, but two last things. We have fingerprint animation. So if you're using fingerprint, I can change that. If you're not, I don't think you can actually do anything here. But obviously, if you're using a fingerprint sensor, you can change how it animates when you press your finger to it. And we have a actually a fairly decent uh, choice right here, like amount of choices right here. So yeah, you can change it to something else that might be fitting more to you. Or you can also just turn it off so it will not animate when you're unlocking the device. And last thing is the horizon lighting. This is just like the, there we go, the lighting on the edges. The curve on this phone is so subtle that I don't think you're gonna see it because initially this kind of design was made so when you're keeping your phone on the screen the the curve would kind of like shine on the table. Though at this time this curve is so subtle that you barely can see it. So there we go. Now there's one little bit of a hiccup right here that I would say uh, usually or before we actually had access to editing the uh, status bar icons. I think it was in here, but I don't see it anymore. Let's see if we can find it. This also was a great feature. So we do have it in no notification and status bar. And in here you have your, well, all the icons that are visible right here. Obviously this does not include your notifications as you can see these ones. So clear them out. Obviously some of them should disappear, but apparently nothing disappeared. There we go. So in here, as you can see, we have a bunch of them like Bluetooth, uh, HD voice, uh, NFC, uh, earphones, alarms, and so on. Now what this allows you to do is keep things enabled, for instance, like Bluetooth, as you can see, you do have icons right here, but what you can do is just get rid of them. 
the actual option is still running, but it's just not going to be showing up here. And it allows you to really clean out your status bar from a lot of like clutter that you'd normally have if you use things uh, quite often, for instance, like Bluetooth or uh, or the Wi-Fi or anything other like do not disturb mode or whatever you can find here that you utilize you can just get rid of it you most likely know that it's running on your phone so you don't need to see it in the status bar and you can get this really nice clean look once you get rid of the uh, these notifications uh, I could basically minimize it to just battery and time and that is really nice to actually have I personally like a clean look and this fits right here with it Anyway, let's move over to the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which is the home screen. And we do have a home screen and a lock screen settings right here, but I'm just going to touch upon the home screen, which in here, it allows you to change uh, the home screen mode from drawer to, uh, to standard if you want to change that. I personally prefer the drawer, so that's what I'm going to be sticking on with, but standard will keep all the apps on the home screen and you won't have the app drawer, which just makes a massive clutter. But then below that we have home screen layout so here we can change how many apps are on the home screen so you can fit more of them uh, have them like more crammed if you want to or less crammed it's completely up to you i personally prefer to have them a little bit more crammed just because uh, they will be a little bit smaller packed tighter and therefore also look a little bit cleaner if you can minimize the amount of them which is what i kind of like to usually go for so there we go and as you can see, that is kind of the effect, though turning that off did uh, move this because we have now a different kind of grid size. So we can just fix that up. Anyway, let's go to the next option, which is going to be the dark mode under the display section right here. Now we do have the dark and light mode, which I did say dark mode, but what I kind of mean more is the auto switched option that we have right here, which uses both of these modes at well, given times. So as an example, it can switch to dark mode during the nighttime and during the daytime, you can have it in light mode, which I personally would consider to be a better option than just switching it permanently to light or dark. So as you can see, you can set it to sun, uh, sunset to sunrise and there you go, you're good to go. Now moving on further in the display section, we have a couple additional things that I'll show right here, which is, uh, See where it was natural tone display and uh, now this one when I turned it on it looks a little bit weird to me a little bit too yellowish uh, but it apparently uh, automatically adjusts color temperature according to the ambient light which is well, the one that I have right here maybe this is the correct one maybe it looks better uh, if I would just get out of like the lit up environment that I'm in on the camera it's not very visible which is quite weird but maybe, like I said, this is all to do with the lighting that I have right here. I have three different lights that are basically lighting up the display or this set, which basically one is absolutely warm light. And with that in mind, it could be mixing up just because it's like super warm with, uh, with this making it look a little bit weird. And hopefully, or hopefully, um, I presume uh, the reason why the camera isn't picking it up is because I have it set to be uh, hard locked to a specific uh, color temperature or true like white tone that I have set. So maybe that's the reason. Now personally when you turn it on and off, uh, at least when I do, it does have a effect kind of as though you would turn on one of those like night mode, uh, reading mode or something like that, where it makes the display like massively yellow. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, which is the video color enhancer. There is also another, not color, but there is also a video sharpness enhancer. So you can utilize all of them. Uh, obviously this one uh, tries to, uh, I guess, use standard uh, resolution to high resolution technology. Is it re resolution or whatever it is. But judging by the image, it's just basically making it look a little bit brighter. Uh, giving it more high dynamic range basically that, that's as i could explain it though it's kind of fake it's not what you'd expect really to be it's just like i said a little bit brighter image uh, probably a little bit more saturated with a turned down uh, shadows so they'll appear deeper 
so if you want to utilize that obviously enable it if you don't care for it just leave it and with that in mind we also have the image sharpener there is the uh, video right here again showing you the image difference between sharper and not sharp and uh, it, obviously this one will be a little bit sharper though i'm i'm not wearing my glasses so it doesn't really look that much different to me but it artificially sharpens the image making it look uh, a little bit more crisp so if that is something that you want to utilize uh, obviously turn that on and there we go that's about it and last thing that i'm going to touch upon is the screen refresh rate which is right here now luckily the phone actually turns on six uh not 60 but 120 hertz and this is oneplus so i actually as uh, assume hope that they are also utilizing the the like smart switch between uh 120 to uh, 60 or hopefully even lower i'm gonna quickly see if that is the case and while i do so i'm gonna quickly just mention um benefits i guess and downsides of this so high refresh rate will consume more battery life but it will result in you uh or having just a more smoother experience on the display so it has its upsides and downsides while 60 will be constantly just kind of choppy and uh, consume less battery life so there we go now i am looking for build version but i don't know where it is versions maybe oh there we go so now that it's enabled i can navigate into the developer options and enable and enable fresh rate refresh rate actually before i go there i will just try to search for it it might be a little bit quicker there we go show refresh rate toggle that on and yep damn this phone actually goes really low so to be completely honest uh with this phone the 120 hertz might actually be the better choice if you if you for instance aren't really like scrolling up and down constantly or just touching the display just because when you're not using it it actually drops it to five i'm not sure why it kind of glitched for a moment to like 30 but yeah as you can see when you're scrolling it automatically switches to 120 which you can see right here and when you stop scrolling it automatically drops it to five that is lower than if you just decide to pick 60. now the lower the frame rate the less power and energy the phone will need to consume to actually do this thus it will actually right now even though i have 120 hertz enabled right now in this kind of state where it's not doing anything this screen will stay up uh, lit up as in like uh, in terms of battery life the battery life will last longer and significantly longer than what you would get when you would actually turn on 60 only and one last thing that i'll just kind of go into is let's go back into the display the refresh rate and just for the people uh, and myself out of interest i want to see if i select 60 60 also actually drops it back to five so it also has like the smart switch uh, to five frames per second which i guess uh, what i said was inaccurate <laughs> Damn. that's a shame so yeah i can utilize both of them and both of them should give you a decent battery life um actually 60 here should give you better battery life than majority of, of the other phones five frames per second and like not doing anything like right now is the lowest frame rate i have seen so far now the reason why this actually has such a good impact is if you don't know what refresh rate is frame rate uh, just a kind of a, a easy explanation as imagine your screen what you see on a screen for instance when you scroll from for instance up to down if you do this for a single second so there we go single second scroll at 60 frames you will get obviously 60 frames that will just show this kind of like display this you can kind of imagine this like these uh, old school movie projectors where you have like just pictures and you just spin them and that's kind of how the display works like so obviously uh five frames would just show five different pictures per second 60 shows 60 and 120 120 of them the more frames you see uh, when scrolling up and down the smoother the image will look like so obviously the lower you can get uh, when you're not doing anything the better for the battery life because it doesn't need to stress 
the CPU to actually push that extra frame rate. So there we go, that's kind of the benefit of having a lower fra frame rate here. But anyway, that being said, this would conclude my fairly simple uh, list of kind of different tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.